Good morning, folks. We're so glad you could join us for this morning's program. I am Pastor Bill Carroll of Still Pond and Betterton United Methodist Churches. And though we are slowly returning to our sanctuaries, we will continue to broadcast via this teleconference as well as posting a video each week's service on our website, stillbetterchurch.org. For those who wish to attend worship in our churches, Betterton services are held at 6 p.m. on Saturday and 9 a.m. Sunday morning, and Still Pond's worship service is scheduled for 10.30 a.m. every Sunday morning. Your gifts to the ministries of these churches are welcome, and you can find each church address posted on the website. And just beneath the address listings, you can also find our online giving option. As always, your gifts will become a means of outreach to people in need in our communities and beyond. And we thank you for participating. I'd like for you all to join me now in a word of prayer as we begin our program this morning. And gracious God, we are thankful for the blessings we receive. But so many times we fail to see your hand at work in our lives, and we are sorry for taking those blessings for granted. In following Christ, we are to fulfill his commission unto us to go into the world and to make disciples of all nations. But we're picky, Lord. We'd rather pick and choose who we are to disciple to, and that is not Christ-like. Help us to respond to the Spirit's calling that we can bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to all that we meet, regardless of their condition or of their position. Bring out your goodness in us as we witness to your glory, and we ask it in Jesus' name, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today is taken from the Gospel of Matthew. It's chapter 10 verses 40 to 42. And I ask that you join me in reading the word of God according to Christ when he said, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I've chosen some lyrics from a song written by T.O. Chisholm. It's entitled, Living for Jesus. Would you please join me in prayer? Lord, we're living for Jesus through earth's little while. Our dearest treasure, the light of his smile. Seeking the lost ones he died to redeem. Bringing the weary to find rest with him. O oh, Jesus, Lord and Savior, we give ourselves to thee. For thou in thy atonement didst give thyself for me. We own no other master. Our hearts shall be thy throne. Our lives we give, henceforth to live. O Christ, for thee alone. Amen. In today's passage, we hear Jesus' closing statement to the disciples as they are about to embark on their first mission trip. And Jesus gives them the authority to cure the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse lepers, and even to cast out demons. And up until this time, Jesus had been the only one doing these good deeds. Now, it's time for his followers to test their faith. Christ instructs them to do so without payment, and to take no money with them, to take no baggage for the journey, no additional clothing, no second sandals, to not even take a walking stick. Jesus tells them to find someone who is worthy in the village that they go to 
and stay at their home because a worthy person will feed them, will care for them, even protect them. If the host proves to be unworthy, the disciple is to brush the dust off his feet and to move on. And then Christ warns them of persecution, of controversy. His very words from verse 16 of that chapter state, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Not everyone is willing to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Some will reject it. Some will ignore it. And still others might be ready to receive it. This being their first attempt at ministry, the disciples might be a bit fearful of the outcome. And that's why Jesus instructs them to be wise and humble. They must put their faith in the message. Have you ever walked into a gathering or a meeting feeling a little bit inferior, not knowing the people that you're meeting? Have you ever been invited to an interview only to feel like you've gone through an inquisition? These are the times when faith is most important. Jesus reminds the disciples saying this, Don't be afraid of people. They can kill you, but they cannot harm your soul. As the Apostle John once wrote, Perfect love cast out fear and the perfect love of God becomes real to us in Christ Jesus which brings us to today's passage Jesus tells his disciples that whoever welcomes you welcomes me and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me the authority of God has been handed down to Christ and he is now entrusting his disciples to deliver God's message which we know to be the good news. The disciples become emissaries of God by the authority of Christ. The Hebrew word for emissary is shaliah, meaning one who is sent. Receiving a king's emissary is the same as receiving the king. For instance, if Governor Hogan sends his representative to your home to deliver a message, when you receive or you welcome the messenger, you are receiving the message, and in effect, you are receiving the governor himself. But if you reject the messenger, you reject the governor, and you will not hear the message that has been sent on your behalf. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son means that God sent his perfect love to an imperfect world. Jesus was not only a perfect model of human behavior, he was the unblemished Lamb of God that fulfills the sacrificial need of death for our sin. When Jesus says the kingdom of God is near, he has announced himself as an emissary of God. Remember what he said, whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. If we do not welcome Christ... We miss the message that God sends us, which is the second half of John 3.16 that says, Whoever believeth in him, in Jesus Christ, shall not perish, but have eternal life. Those who reject Christ reject the gospel message, and they forfeit their place in the kingdom of God. In verses 41 and 42 of today's passage, Jesus talks about the rewards of prophets, of righteous people, and of the little ones. This becomes confusing for many professing Christians. They believe that they must be good to get into heaven. Our reward is not heaven. Our rewards are in heaven. Jesus once said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And then he said this in the Sermon on the Mount, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. Meaning there is joy in being an emissary, in being a shaliah of God. Remember Paul's letter to to the Ephesians when he says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, 
And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may brag about it. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And in his closing of the book of Revelation, John recalls Christ's promise to his followers when he said this, Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay everyone for what he has done. The rewards are stored in heaven for the good works we do here on earth. And Christ delivers those, re those rewards to us upon his return to take us home. As humans, though, we sometimes find little equity in doing good things here on earth in mere hopes of payment in heaven. We've grown accustomed to getting paid, sometimes in advance, for our worldly efforts. But we, re we must remember that we are Christians. We have died to the old self. We are now emissaries of God. Our mission is not one that hopes for a, return, for a return on our investment. Our mission is one of hope for those who don't yet know Christ. Jesus came to heal the sick and to save the lost. As a Shalaya of Christ, we deliver the hope of salvation found in Christ Jesus. We've been given the authority and the power to act on his behalf. And we shouldn't be keeping any accounting of the rewards we've earned along the way. We need to let God keep the books on that. But every so often... God allows his blessings to be revealed to us here on earth. In the 1982 Oscar-winning movie Chariots of Fire, we relive the story of Harold Abraham and Eric Little, the two 100-meter runners for Great Britain in the 1924 Olympics. Little had already beaten his fellow countryman the year before and was by far the best chance for Great Britain to win the gold medal in the 100-meter event. But Little was also a devout Christian, studying in seminary for his ordination. And when the qualifying heats for the race were to be held on Sunday, Little refused to run in observance of the Sabbath. A teammate who had already won a silver medal in the hurdles gave up his spot to Little in the 400 meter race that was to be held later that week on Thursday. He told the Flying Scotsman, he told Little, I just love watching you run. Though it was not his preferred race, Little qualified for the final. The 400 meter race, it staggers the runner's starting positions so that the outside runner on the outside lane cannot see any of his competitors. And that's exactly where Little was positioned. In his cordial manner, just before the race, he shook hands and wished each competitor well. He had already been in two events earlier that day, and, and the American track coach, he told his two finalists, who's his two American finalists in the race, that they needn't be afraid of little. He is spent. This is not his best event. He won't last. Jackson Schultz, however, the American silver medalist of the 100 meter race that Little didn't run in, he told those two American runners to watch out for Little. Little wasn't running to win the race, he said. He was running for a higher purpose. You see, Eric Little's decision to not run the 100 meter race, but to honor God on the Sabbath, was written in newspapers all over the world. Many people criticized him calling him selfish and disloyal to his country. But Schultz praised his courage and his character. He realized Little's first loyalty was to God when he traded the certain rewards of a gold medal in the 100-meter race for the rewards being stored up for him in heaven. Not everyone in the world recognized that Little was delivering a message from God. But Schultz did, and he walked over to Little 
right before the, the race, and he handed him a note containing these words from 2 Samuel chapter 2. It says, Mr. Little, it says in the good book, He who honors me, I will honor him. Good luck, Jackson Schultz. Eric Little, in his peculiar style running with arms flailing about, his head held back, and a huge smile across his face, won the 400-meter race and the gold medal for that event in world record time. Because he couldn't see the other runners, he ran only towards the one before him, his Lord and Savior. And he gave all the glory to God, saying, I believe God made me for a purpose, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. For a moment, God gave his blessings to a man who honored the Lord in the race. And Little's running took on a new face when he returned to his studies and he served as missionary in Japanese-occupied China until his death near the end of World War II. The integrity he showed in 47 seconds in 1924 served as inspiration to many Chinese youth he met during his ministry over the next 20 years. A Shalaya is an emissary of God. The English translation, Apostle. As Christians, we are all called to run the race set before us and not for earthly rewards. The question is, are you looking for a return on your investment to the Lord or do you already know that your rewards are great in heaven? There is joy in serving the Lord and we can experience that joy right here on earth. Remember the words of Christ when he said, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Let us pray. Lord, we long to serve you, but at times we wonder if we're effective. We wonder if we've made any impact to those we minister. Help us in our faith to trust your glory is being revealed in your timing. Help us to stay focused on you and not be so concerned about what the world thinks or says about our style of running the race that you set before us. Guide us by the Holy Spirit that we might live a life that glorifies you first and you always. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. A closing thought, according to today's scripture, you can receive God's rewards through hospitality. The prophet speaks the gospel, the righteous live the gospel, and as Jesus says, whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. In Matthew 25, Christ speaks of the final judgment, separating the sheep from the goats, the righteous from the unrighteous. The righteous inherit the kingdom of God because, he says, when I was hungry, you fed me. And when I was thirsty, you gave me drink. When you did this to the least of these, to these little ones, you did it for me. Not everyone is a preacher and not everyone is capable of serving in the missionary field. But we can help them in their ministries as well as helping those who are the sick, the young, the emotionally and mentally dis disadvantaged, the poor, and the oppressed. These are the little ones, the least of these, that Christ calls us to nurture. Remember, a cup of cold water might be the simplest of gifts, but it can be life-giving to the one who is dying of thirst. Please join us for worship in our sanctuaries, and if you're unable to do that, you can always tune in next Sunday morning at 8 a.m. for another broadcast. And until then, 
Go in peace. May the peace of God go with you. Amen.